Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to talk about how to find the domain in the range with a polynomial. So it can be a polynomial of any order. Here we have an example. We have one to the fourth order. And as an example here, some arbitrary graph of some polynomial that we don't know, what we're, what we're looking for is the extreme points, the local extrema, the absolute extrema, and get a picture of what that polynomial looks like in a graphical sense so we get a feel of where the limits are of the range in the domain. In this particular case, you can see that there's a maximum height that is achieved here. This is the highest point of the graph, so that would be the highest point of the range. You can see that it goes on continuously in the downward direction, so there's no limit in the downward direction. It goes off to negative infinity in the y direction in the range. And then in the domain, you can see that as you go further and further down, these will go farther and farther apart, so there's no limit in the x direction, both in a positive and negative direction. So we can see that the domain in this case is, goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. That means all x's are an, an element of the real number system. And in the range, we can see there's a maximum value here and there's no minimum value. So that's what we want to do. In order to find the, the range in the domain of a polynomial, what we need to be able to do is graph it. And when we graph it, when we try to graph it anyway, we're trying to look for some key points. We try to find the zero points or the roots, the place where the polynomial, the graph of the polynomial, crosses the x-axis. And also, we try to find the maximum and minimum points on the graph, or the local max and the local minimum. So here we have the example. The first method that we're going to use is what we call the method of factoring. Sometimes it looks daunting, especially when we see something to the fourth order and we, sit and we say to ourselves, how in the world can we find the roots? But sometimes it's not so difficult when we realize that we can factor some things out. In this case, notice that every term has x's in it and the smallest order of the x's is x squared, so we can factor out an x squared. So this can be written as y is equal to x squared times, and what's remaining is a minus 2 x to the second power minus x to the first power plus 3. We do not like to have these negative signs, especially in front of the x squared term, so we're going to also factor out the negative sign. So this becomes y equals minus x squared, and then all the signs change in here. That would be 2x squared plus x minus 3, and this becomes easier to factor if indeed it's factorable, but at least we've already factored out an x squared. Let's see if we can factor the rest. So y is equal to minus x squared times, and of course we would end up with two binomials. Since we have a 2x squared here, we need a 2x here, and we need an x there. Notice the signs. That means I need a positive and a negative to get a negative 3 here. I need a 3 and a 1. It's just a matter of where do I put the 3, where do I put the 1, where do I put the positive sign, and where do I put the negative sign. I do have a plus x in the middle here. So what I think about doing is I'm going to make this a plus 3 and a minus 1. If that doesn't work, I'll try something different. But notice, 3 times x is 3x, that's a positive 3x, and a minus 1 times 2x is a minus 2x, plus 3x, minus 2x gives me a plus x for the middle, and negative 1 times 3 gives me the negative 3. I found the correct factors. So now, if I want to find the root of the of the equation, what I do then is I set y equal to 0. So set y equal to 0. We do that to find the roots, to find the 0 points. And so therefore we have 0 equals minus x squared times the quantity 2x plus 3 times the quantity x minus 1. So here we have three entities multiplied together and we get a 0. That means that any one of them can be a zero, which means x squared can equal zero, or 2x plus 3 can equal zero, or x minus 1 equals zero. So if that's the case, we can then say that x equals zero. That's one of the roots. And notice, since we have x squared equals zero, that's actually a double root, as we call it. Here we can say that 2x equals minus 3, which means x equals minus 3 over 2. There's another root. And finally, here we can say that x equals 1 is another root. So those are the places where the, where the graph of this particular polynomial crosses the x-axis. So let's go ahead and try to graph the beginnings of this. Let's find the point x equals 0. That's right here. So we know that we have a root right there. We know the graph crosses that point. 
We have um, x equals negative 3 over 2, so if this is negative 1, this is negative 2. Right here would be negative 3 over 2, there's the point 0. And finally, x equals 1 over here, there's another root, x equals 1. All right, we don't quite know yet what the graph looks like. However, we do realize here that this is x to the fourth power, and there's a negative coefficient in front of that. So an x to the fourth power, the general form of that, either looks like this, like a w, or an upside down w. That's the typical format of an x to the fourth polynomial. This means that the coefficient is a positive coefficient. So the, the coefficient in front of the x to the fourth term, or fourth variable, is greater than zero in this case, and here a is less than zero in this case. So we come over here, it's less than zero, minus two, so it should look something like that. So we, need, so we know that the graph is going to come up from down here, cross this point, come here now. On the other side, we have the same thing. We know that the graph must look something like this. The graph must look something like this, because that's the general form of it. And notice, we only have one more point where it either crosses or touches the line. Now in this case, since this is a double root, we suspect that it touches the line there but doesn't cross over. So then the logical explanation is that it probably looks like this, comes back down, back up like this, and then completes the graph. Now that may not be the exact uh, form of the equation, or I should say the exact graph. This could be a little higher, this could be a little higher. We're not quite sure, but we know this is the general shape of the polynomial's graph. Okay, now we have some indications here that we definitely know that the range has no limit in the negative direction, the domain has no limit in any direction, and the range does have a limit in the positive direction. So the only thing left now is to find out how high this graph goes. Now that is not necessarily an easy task to do in this particular example and without the use of calculus because actually calculus would make it a little bit easier. But what we can do is we can at least approximate it in, with algebraic techniques. What we can do is assume that the highest point here will be somewhere at the halfway point between 0 and 1 and the highest point here will be somewhere at the halfway point between 0 and negative 3 over 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate original function at these two locations at x equals one half and at x equals minus three, uh, let's see, minus uh, three quarters, I should say, right? So minus three quarters would be the halfway point between zero and minus three halves and half would be the halfway point between zero and one and see which one is the highest and we'll call that the highest point on the graph. It'll be close, it may not be exact, but close enough. All right, let's try the first one at x equals one half. So y, when x is equal to one half, is equal to, let me make some room here, that would be minus two times one half to the fourth power, minus one half to the third power, and plus three times one half to the second power. So this gives us, that would be uh, one sixteenth times the minus two, that would be minus one eight. Here we have minus one eight. And here we have one quarter times three, that would be three quarters or plus six eighths. That would be equal to four eighths, which is equal to one half. So the highest point that it gets to over here would be y equals one half. Approximately, not exactly, what we can do is using a calculator, go a little bit further to the left, a little bit further right, and zero in on that exact value. That may take some while, and it's not really worth doing at this point. We just kind of illustrate what we're trying to do here. The next thing we're going to do is evaluate the function at y equals minus 3 quarter. So y, when x equals minus 3 quarter, is equal to minus 2 times 3 quarter, oh, minus 3 quarter to the fourth power, minus 3 quarters, or minus 3 quarters to the third power, and plus 3 times minus 3 quarters to the second power. All right, so this becomes equal to that would be 81 over 256, so minus 2 times 81 over 256. This will be a minus when we cube it, times a minus becomes a plus, so plus, that would be 27 over 64. And this would be uh, a plus again, so plus, that would be 9 times 3, which is 27 over 16. Putting everything over the same common denominator, combining terms, 
So this would be equal to minus 162 over 256 plus 27 times 4, that's 108, plus 108 over 256. And this would be plus 16 goes in 256 16 times, so 27 times 16 equals 432, plus 432 over 256. And when we add that together, we get 432 plus 108 minus 162, so we get 378 over 256. We can simplify that, but that's good enough. And so you can see that this is indeed larger than this, meaning that the curve goes up higher at this point, and so we can say that this is the point minus 3 quarters and 378 divided by 256. Assuming that is the highest point or very close to the highest point, we'll go ahead and take that as the maximum value of our graph. And so now we can find the domain and the range. And I'm looking for some space on the board. So let me take this small little corner that I have left for some space. D domain is, e is equal to all the x's such that the x is an element of all the reals because x can go out infinity in that direction and infinity in the negative direction. On the range, there is indeed a limit. The range is equal to all the y's such that that's the upper limit. So that would be 378 over 256 is larger than or equal to y, which is larger than or equal to negative infinity because it can all the way go to negative infinity and that would be the range for this particular function. So the methodology is to find a way to graph it. When you graph it you're looking for the key points such as the roots, the local max or an absolute maximum and the local min or absolute minimum in both the x and the y directions. We then want to use, in this case, the technique of factoring. This lends itself to factoring. When we factor, we can find the roots. After we find the roots, we can find the points where we assume the highest and lowest points on the graph will be. And that's the technique that we use when we use factoring to find the domain and the range of a polynomial. In the next videos, we'll show you some different techniques to accomplish the same thing.